Hi, I'm Jimmy Radcliffe. The plyometric drills in this program have been specifically designed to improve strength and explosive power. And as such, they should be used in a complete sports training program. Because the majority of these drills are advanced, they should be performed by athletes who have completed strength or plyometric training programs and who are already highly conditioned in their sport. It's very important to employ core strengthening exercises which develop posture, balance, stability, and flexibility. These would include torso and limb exercises which employ flexion, extension, and rotation movements for optimum mobility. If you need help assessing your ability to perform these intense training exercises, there are several assessment tests available in the book High Powered Plyometrics. In this program, we'll first show you how to correctly perform basic and advanced plyometric exercises. Then you'll learn how to advance progressively through the exercises. And finally, we'll give you guidelines to help you incorporate high-powered plyometrics in your specific sport training program. One of the best places to perform these drills is on regular grass, as it provides a resilient and cushioning surface. But be sure to avoid muddy or hard grass. A sand pit may be used as an effective final landing area for some of the drills. Indoors, you can use cushioned hardwood floors, running tracks, rubber weight room floors, and artificial turf. Wrestling mats can also be used for landings only. Because of the importance of making proper landings, select thin-soled footwear that avoids excessive heel contact. You can also safely perform foundation lower body exercises in your bare feet. Before we get started, it is important to remember these training tips. Begin with a warm-up of the body core, and at the end of the training session, be sure to cool down. Proper breathing consists of inhaling during the descent, holding the breath during the stretch, and exhaling with the jump, push, or throw. When landing, make between two-thirds to full foot contact with the ground, ankles locked, balancing your weight on the front of the foot. Always block the arms by moving them forward and upward. This punching motion gives you 10 to 12 percent more power and keeps your torso upright and balanced. In all upper body movements, try to prevent the recovery motion from returning beyond the starting point. Rest between sets for approximately one minute for low intensity exercises and two minutes for high intensity exercises. The drills and exercises in this program will be performed along a continuum, that is, from low intensity to moderate to high intensity. As your strength and performance improves, you can advance to the more strenuous exercises. In the foundation section, we'll demonstrate lower impact or intensity exercises. In the power building section, moderate impact exercises. And in the high intensity section, high impact exercises. Most athletic movement originates from the hips and legs moves through the midsection of the body to the shoulders, chest, and arms. Plyometric exercises follow this power chain and have been divided into drills for the lower body, trunk, and upper body. Let's now begin with the low intensity plyometric drills. The pogo drill starts with the athlete in an upright stance with the knees slightly bent, chest out, and shoulders back. Begin with a vertical takeoff, projecting the hips upward for height using only the lower portion of the legs. On takeoff, the ankle must lock the foot in a toes-up position. Maintain this locked position to ensure sturdy contacts and quick elastic takeoffs. The squat jump drill develops power in the legs and hips and applies to many sports. 
The primary emphasis is to attain maximum height with every effort. Assume a relaxed upright stance with feet about shoulder width apart. Interlock the fingers and place the palms against the back of the head. This will assure proper posture for takeoff and landing. Begin by flexing downward to a half squat position. Immediately check this downward movement and then explode upward as high as possible, extending the hips, knees, and ankles to maximum length as quickly as you can. Freeze the landing, check for quality, and begin another repetition. Progress from single jumps with pauses to multiple jumps where the jump begins just before reaching the semi-squat position. Work for maximum height with each jump. The box jump drill uses several starting positions, all performed approximately an arm's length away from the landing platform. The first progression begins in a semi-squat stance, with feet positioned hip width apart and arms back. The counter movement jump position starts with the same upright stance and foot positioning. Quickly move into the semi squat, then make an explosive takeoff. The step starting position is similar to the counter movement position, but begins with one foot under the hip and the other foot behind it. Bend the knees and shift the weight to the forward foot to avoid any rocker step action. In pushing off, the back foot creates momentum for the takeoff. The last starting position involves a lateral step. The athlete is positioned approximately one and one half steps directly to the side of the takeoff position. Push off with the outside foot and lead with the inside leg into a lateral move to a two foot takeoff from the original takeoff spot. In all of the takeoffs, rapidly extend the hips and knees and while blocking the arms, quickly and explosively push off the ground into a flexed landing position on the platform. The prancing drill is the beginning progression for bounding. Project the hips horizontally off a two-foot landing and takeoff. It's important to perform this drill with takeoffs and landings on both feet simultaneously. Begin in a standing position with a slight knee bend and the hips tilted forward. Take off, pushing the hips outward and upward with the knee of one leg recovering forward. Upon landing, repeat the takeoff with the opposite knee recovering forward. The upper body action is the same as in running. The ankles must remain locked in a toes up position so that both feet land together. Begin the galloping drill by standing with one leg in front of the other. Push off with the back leg and foot, keeping the ankle locked to emphasize a spring-loaded landing and takeoff. The opposite leg is in a forward position, maintaining balance for the initial landing and striding. After executing 6 to 12 repetitions, switch the position of the legs and repeat the sequence. Emphasize hip projection upward and forward with forceful quick extensions of the back knee and ankle. These should be accompanied by light cyclic striding actions with the lead leg. The fast skipping drill is excellent for working the striding muscles. The progressions reinforce sprinting and jumping mechanics and help develop explosiveness. Begin in a relaxed standing position with one leg slightly forward. Start skipping while maintaining close contact with the ground, minimizing air time. Skip with a step-hop pattern of right-right step to left-left step to right-right step, and so on. Perform this sequence as fast as possible. Drive the toes of the lead leg upward with the knee forward and upward and keep the heel up under the hips. The emphasis should be on maximum thigh extension, recovery, and frequency. The hop progression drill builds speed and power in the muscles of the legs and hips. Stand directly in front of a series of hurdles spaced approximately three feet apart. Assume a relaxed position with the knees slightly bent and the arms at the sides. Begin the hop with a quick counter movement jump. Extend the hips for vertical height 
and at full extension, tuck the toes, knees, and heels upward in a cycling motion. Upon each landing, take off quickly upward again with the same cycling action of the legs. Execute the The medicine ball over and under drill uses a 5 to 15 pound ball. Stand with the feet approximately shoulder width apart and back to a partner or facing away from a wall. The feet are flat and the knees maintain a slight bend. Pass the ball back and forth over the head and between the legs while maintaining a chest out posture and full foot contact stability. After sets of 10 to 15 repetitions, switch from receiving to passing. The medicine ball twists drill begins with the athlete standing with the feet flat, shoulder width apart, knees bent, and chest out. Stand back to back with a partner or facing away from a wall. While holding the ball, hand it to the partner or touch the wall. Open the hips and turn the shoulders to give and accept the ball. Keep the feet in full contact with the ground, while emphasizing posture and flexibility throughout the half-twist rotation. One partner turns and passes the ball to one side, while the other turns to the same side to receive it. A more complex progression of this drill is the full twist. Begin in the same starting position and posture. The difference between this and the previous drill is the greater degree of rotation and flexibility. With the medicine ball full twist, both partners turn in the same direction, one to hand off, the other to receive. The shovel toss drill helps develop an athlete's explosiveness out of the blocks or a stance. Athletes use a 5 to 15 pound ball. Begin on both knees and place the ball on the ground. Keep the chest out hips high and back, and position the shoulders in front of the ball. With the arms relaxed, athletes toss the ball in a line drive as far and as fast as possible by quickly thrusting the hips and extending the trunk. Execute a scooping or shoveling action, ending in a push-up position. Emphasize a full extension of the hips and shoulders. The medicine ball chest pass drill develops the upper body power needed in basketball, wrestling, football, and the shot put. A 7 to 15 pound medicine ball is used. Partners stand, kneel, or sit facing each other. One partner holds the ball chest high with the hands slightly behind the ball and the arms flexed. The other partner anticipates the catch with arms extended. The ball is passed forcefully to the partner. The receiver checks the momentum of the ball and, before the arms are fully collapsed, pushes the ball back with a full follow-through. Repeat the sequence back and forth. The medicine ball overhead throw drill helps improve overhead throwing power in sports such as baseball, softball, football, soccer, and the javelin throw. Begin by lying with your back flat on the ground or a table with the feet flat and the knees up. Throw the ball in a line drive to a partner or against a wall. Keep the back and head relaxed and on the ground. Initiate arm movement at the shoulder joint without flexing the elbow. The two-arm progression drill is the same as the one-arm overhead throw, except that you use both arms and a larger 5 to 8 pound ball. Using the momentum of the throwing motion and the thrust of the chest brings you to a sit-up position. The throwing motion is centered at about the shoulder joint. Lead with the chest and follow through flexing at the waist. Perform the knee tuck drill in the comfortable upright stance with the palms of the hands facing downward. Begin with a slight squat and immediately explode upward. Drive the knees high toward the chest, attempting to touch the palms of the hands. 
Upon landing, repeat the sequence, each time driving the knees upward and tucking the feet under the body. Perform multiple responses at a rapid rate with minimal ground contact. The scissors jump drill is especially good for runners and jumpers. To begin, extend one leg forward with the knee over the midpoint of the foot. The other leg is extended backward with the knee bent and is underneath the line of the hips and shoulders. Jump as high as possible with the arms blocking to gain additional lift. At the peak of the jump, reverse the position of the legs. Upon landing, repeat the jump, again reversing the position of the legs. Emphasize maximum height and leg speed. The lateral stair-bound progression drill begins in a semi-squat stance with the shoulders perpendicular to the stairs. The weight is concentrated on the upstairs leg. Now drop back one step with the downside leg. Extend that leg and knee and drive off the upside leg. Quickly bound upward and inward two or three steps. Repeat this sequence of down one step and up two or three for eight to twelve repetitions. Then repeat facing the opposite direction. The alternate leg bound drill is a key exercise in developing explosive leg and hip power. Assume a comfortable stance with one foot slightly ahead of the other with the arms relaxed and at the sides. Begin by pushing off with the back leg, driving the knee forward and upward to gain as much height and distance as possible before landing. Repeat the sequence driving with the other leg on landing. Keep the ankle locked with the toes and heel up under the hips to reduce the ground contact time. You can move the arms as in running or execute a double arm swing. Variations on this stationary start include walking or running starts, alternating the landings, such as right, right, left, 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 right, or right, right, left, left. Perform the angle hop drill on a multiple angle box or similar apparatus securely attached to the ground. Angle hops improve balance and lateral movement in alpine skiing, tennis, football, and gymnastics, as well as other sports. Stand in a relaxed position on one angled surface of the box. Hop laterally from one side of the box to the next, emphasizing a rapid side-to-side -side motion. Once the skill has been improved, progress to greater angles. The single leg progression hop drill begins with the athlete standing in a relaxed position in front of a series of three to five hurdles spaced approximately three feet apart. Balance on one leg, keeping the other leg in a flexed position with the toes up, knee in front of the body, and the heel underneath the hip. Using the swing leg for lift and drive, extend the hips for vertical height, tuck the toes, knees, and heels upward in a cycling motion to clear the hurdles. Land with full foot contact and give at the knees and hips. After landing, pause and prepare for the next hop. Progress to multiple hops without pausing between hops. The bar twist drill is most helpful for the throwing and swinging activities of football, baseball, softball, golf, and track and field. Use a weighted bar of 20 to 50 pounds. Standing upright, Place the bar on the shoulders and hold it securely with both hands as far from the center as possible. Bend the knees and place the feet slightly more than shoulder width apart. Twist the upper body in one direction, then before the torso is fully rotated, twist in the opposite direction. Repeat this sequence, actively thrusting the bar in one direction, then the other. Concentrate on using the torso muscles throughout this exercise. The twist toss drill applies to training for throwing and swinging. A 9 to 15 pound medicine ball is ideal for this exercise, which works all the torso muscles involved with rotating the body. 
Cradle the ball next to the body at about waist level. Keep the knees bent and place the feet slightly wider than shoulder width apart. Begin by rapidly twisting the torso in the opposite direction of the intended toss. Abruptly check the twist, powerfully reverse the direction and release the ball. Concentrate on a rapid cocking action before twisting in the direction of the throw. Use the hips as well as the shoulders and arms. The medicine ball scoop throw develops explosive power from the core. Assume a semi-squat stance. Hold the head up and keep the back straight. Thrust the hips forward and move the shoulders backward. Propel the ball backward over your head, attempting to achieve maximum distance. Before you begin performing the high-powered plyometric drills in this program, be sure to develop a well-balanced and progressive training program. This progression will enable you to safely and successfully advance to the elite level.